Welcome guys to another video and in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the well and anticipated Windows 10 technical preview. Finally it's been released, it's been, people have been waiting for this all summer I think and um, well I'm going to be taking a look at it today and giving you kind of my view on what I think about Windows 10. So without further ado let's kind of get into it. First, I'm going to talk about the name because that's been really kind of creating a lot of stir online. Now, Windows 10, people are saying, well, why did you skip Windows 9? Why didn't you go with Windows 9? You know, keep it in order. Well, there's been quite a few theories going around. The one that Microsoft stated in their um, press conference yesterday was that they went with Windows 10 because they thought it was closer to Xbox One, OneDrive, and everything being one service is really what their goal is. Um, they originally wanted Windows 1, but obviously Windows 1.0 really kind of took that away from them. So they settled for Windows 10. Uh, some other people state that Windows 10 was called that because of a coding error made way back in the day, um, back when 95 and 98 were out. So therefore they had to go with Windows 10. Some of the people said that there was a kernel error, or not kernel error, um, she's what am I talking about? Some people stated that it was that it was the 10th kernel created for Windows since Windows NT back in, was it, uh, I think it was not back in, uh, version 3.1 I think it was, don't quote me on that, but 3.5, 3.1. Essentially there has been 10 um, kernel versions that have been released, this one being the 10th, and that's why they called it Windows 10. That one kind of seems a little bit more viable to me, why they called it Windows 10. Um, another thing, and we're kind of going to get into the review a little bit here, is the biggest feature that everybody has been waiting for and the biggest gripe about Windows 8 was the start screen and how cumbersome it was to navigate um, on a desktop. And if you watched my Windows Eight um, review way back when it, before it was released, I basically said that, and to this day I still stick to my guns, saying that Windows Eight is not a bad operating system. It actually really is much more stable than Windows Seven, but it doesn't work good on a desktop. It's just not good to navigate. Now, eight point one has fixed a lot of that. I currently run Windows eight point one on my system and like it a lot. Um, I would not go back to Windows Seven just because I'm used to it now. Um, so I kind of might be a little bit biased when it comes to looking at Windows 10 in the way of I am a Windows 8 user, so I've already used the new UI more than a Windows 7, necess Windows 7 user would necessarily have. But let's get in the review now. Let's take a look at that new start menu that they've got right down here. We click on the start menu and there you go. If you noticed, it's a little bit different than years past start menus where you do have your classic menu style programs all listed vertically right here. But then off to the right, you have your modern UI style apps and your new apps that you can get from the App Store. Now, I really like how they've kind of molded the two together here. This is really a good thing that they've done. Um, and editing these are really easy too. So now let's say we want to add a new app. What I'll do is I can go to all apps here. If we want to, let's say, add sports, we want to get latest sports news, right? You can either right click and you can pin to start or you can basically click and hold and then drag it off into the apps window over here and you can put it essentially wherever you want um, so let's say we want to put it right here next to weather weather and sports right so you kind of go hand in hand <clears throat> so now let's say that oh, I really don't like how it kind of jutted out my start menu to the right well you can essentially raise and lower the start menu as you please so if you want to go up here towards the top until you get the two double set double sided arrows you can click and hold and drag up, essentially making it more vertical and making it more streamlined. So you can adjust the size of the window. That's really a nice feature. You can also do it the opposite and make it really kind of shallow and short and have a lot of your apps go off to the right. Um, this would be really nice, especially for widescreens nowadays, considering that vertical height is not nearly as um, plentiful as horizontal height, obviously being a widescreen. So it's kind of nice that Microsoft allows you to do that now. But for now, I really just kind of prefer it like this. It's just kind of the way aesthetically I've been used to it. But over time, I'll probably change it. So essentially the same thing as to remove an app. You right click on the app and you can go ahead and unpin from start. 
And if we do that, you can see it unpinned. However, it did not automatically resize it. There would be a nice feature to add Microsoft if you're watching this video is automatically resize the start menu when somebody removes an app. Just notice that right now. Um, so yeah, I um, just want to mention that too, guys. As I'm going along, I've only been using Windows 10 now for better half of two hours. So I'm kind of new at it too. So we're kind of just going along, which is a good thing. It really gives a good average person review of how people are going to react to Windows 10. So um, getting a little bit more into the start menu settings, if we right click, we obviously get the power user menu still like in Windows 8. If we right click on the taskbar, we can go to properties. Not much has changed in here except for the fact that we do now have a start menu tab. And in that start menu tab, we have this option right here that is says use start menu instead of start screen, which is checked by default on the desktop, which it should be. Um, but now Microsoft has introduced a kind of, they still kept the old fashioned, or I shouldn't say old fashioned, the new UI, it's just kind of hidden a little bit. So they give you the start menu as well as the new UI, because like I said, the new UI is great for a tablet, but not so much for a desktop. So they kind of did originally what I was telling them to do in a sense. So if we uncheck this use the start menu instead of start um, screen and click OK, we're going to be presented with this message saying we need to sign out and sign back in. Now we're going to get an error, maybe not, last time I did get an error, um, and then we're going to have to sign back in. Now it's going to bring me to the desktop because it's automatically set to do that. We can change that setting once again by going to properties, start menu, or actually um, navigation here and then basically it says when I sign in, close all apps and go to start uh, desktop instead. Uncheck that and then um, click OK. Essentially now it won't uh, log me in to the desktop right away. But now if I click the start button, it will present us with the start screen, which everyone has probably been used to if you're used to using Windows 8. And of course in the start screen you got the um, charm bar here, I think. Um, I haven't been able to get my charm bar to work. I don't know if it's turned off. But um, yeah, let me see if I can quick go find that setting, if there is a setting about the charm bar. Let's see, uh, show charms, okay, yeah. So essentially, I don't know why that's not working. Like I said, this is a technical preview. There are bound to be bugs in it. That could be because I'm using it on a virtual machine and not an actual machine. And I'm also telling the virtual machine it's Windows 8, when in fact it is Windows 10, which doesn't exist to the virtual machine yet. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and put those settings back the way they were. Use the start menu because I'm using the desktop right now and I prefer the start menu. As much as I do like Windows 8 and all of its glory, I do have a start menu on Windows 8. If you watch my classic shell video, that'll show you what I use. So now if we click on start uh, button again, we get presented with the start menu once more. So let's see, what else do we have here? Uh, we went through the settings, we went through pinning. Let's take a look now at task view. Now task view is a new feature that they added and you've probably seen this in the video so I don't wanna really go through it too much. But essentially, if you click task view, you can add a new desktop. Now I tried this a little bit earlier and I kinda of had some issues with it. It wasn't really working properly. So let's go ahead and go to this, this desktop and open up my computer or this PC I should say. I still call it my computer for some reason. Uh, let's open up the recycle bin. And then we're also going to open up Internet Explorer, just kind of as an example here. All right, so we got those three windows kind of just chilling off right over here. Now let's go ahead to Task View and switch over to our other desktop. You can see they all went away. Essentially now what we can do is we can open up different types of apps. So let's say we want to open up Internet Explorer. In this case, if you just click on it, it'll bring you back to the previous desktop because it thinks that you're just trying to open up another window. So if you really want to open up another window, that didn't really make sense, did it now? So let me start over with that. If you click on the Internet Explorer, what it'll do is it'll bring you back to the other desktop because it thinks it might you're trying to get back to the previous page you were at. Now, I want to open a new window. So to do that, I have to right click and click Internet Explorer. Essentially, it'll open up another window and leave it on this desktop. Um, if we open up this PC, that one you do not need to do anything special with. You just open it up like that. Now, let's see if I can open up Notepad on this specific desktop. So let's go to All Apps. Oh, actually, we can use the search here. And I'm going to talk a little bit about the search right now. Well, actually, let me finish this first, and then I'll talk about the search a little bit. So let's go down to Notepad. All right, so we got these uh, all up here, chilling on this desktop. Let's say we want to go to a different desktop now. We want to leave all this up here, but we don't want to have to close it or move it around because I have it arranged just the way I like it. 
So now what we can do, we can click task view and we can go to our previous desktop right over here. Now we can see everything is in the certain place that we left it before we create a new desktop. So that's kind of a really nice feature that they've done right there. Now let me see, this didn't really work earlier. If I go ahead and close this desktop out, it does not close any of the materials. It just moves it all to this desktop. So it kind of crams it all in one desktop. It's kind of nice in the fact that you won't lose your work, but I can see it kind of being a little bit of a nuisance if you accidentally close a desktop or you close a desktop assuming that all the stuff is going to be gone when in fact it just gets moved and close the other desktop that you had created. So we're going to go ahead and close all this. And now I'm going to kind of go back because I forgot to talk, talk to you guys about the search feature on the start menu. Um, now there's two search buttons right here. If we click this one right here, it essentially pulls up more of a search window, which can give you search results. So if we Google Windows 10, we get a bunch of search results with Google, as well as things on your computer, local files. So now if we click on Start Menu, the Start Menu, not my computer there. All right, so to click on the Start Menu, we click on Search. We go, we go do, we do a search for Windows 10. We essentially get the same results. So I don't know if they're gonna kind of combine these two. I would much rather see them combine them and just to the, into just the start menu and not have two separate searches. I think that's just gonna be confusing for most people. So that's kind of my little tip right here. That's the biggest what I can give you guys so far at Microsoft is combine the two searches, make them one, don't make them two. Maybe you guys have a different plan, but so far that's what I'm seeing um, by testing this out. Is it would be much nicer to have one. So that's essentially the search feature on Windows 10. Now, this one was shown, this little feature I'm going to show you next was shown in the, um, uh, was it the press release that they had yesterday. It's kind of corny, I agree with them, but nevertheless, it kind of presents to you, the user, and I agree with them, the fact that they are trying to get the power users back onto Windows and stuff like that, that they are making it so that desktop users and people like me who do more intricate stuff with computers, not just going and playing a latest copy of Angry Birds or, or some little app like that. Um, basically, they've introduced copy and pasting. So what I'm going to show you here is how that works. Well, I guess you probably all know how copy and pasting works, but um, let's go ahead and pull up a notepad file here and type in ipconfig slash all. So let's say I want to copy this command. In. Now, obviously, this command you would just normally type in, but my point is, you can go online if someone tells you type these commands in you can literally just copy and paste them into the command prompt uh, using your keyboards now because in Windows 8 you could copy and paste but you had to right click on the actual command prompt you couldn't use your keyboard it would just give you um, basically a V um, saying it was a control V command it would not actually copy and paste it so if we go ahead and control C that in notepad and click on the command prompt and go control V Essentially, it gets pasted in there. You push enter, the command is executed, and your information you wanted or uh, task you wanted to complete it will be executed. So that's that little simple thing right there I thought I'd show you guys. Um, we already went through the tablet versus PC mode, or P PC, tablet versus desktop mode and how they're kind of molding the two together and also keep them separated too so that you don't have that um, con conflict with uh, the modern UI when using desktop. Um, another thing that I've noticed, I'm just going to kind of say um, the effects that they've added. Uh, they've added a little shadow effect right here. I kind of like that. Um, it adds just a nice little touch to the window. So thumbs up right there. I know it's kind of, you know, once again, it's a stupid little thing that I noticed, but these small things right there really do kind of make the difference. So I like that effect. Windows 8 was just kind of bland in a sense of it didn't have many effects. It just it doesn't aesthetically do much for me. Um, like Windows 7, the arrow glass they had. I know some people don't like the arrow glass, but I really did like it, the whole transparent menu thing. And I almost wish they had it back in Windows. They almost get it back in Windows 10 because I do like the transparency. I think that it just was pretty cool that they had that. So um, that's basically it for, um, well, actually, I'll show you this PC right here. Um, nothing really has changed much in here. As you can see, it looks very similar to Windows 8. However, like I said, this is a technical preview. I've said it over and over again, and um, I'm going to keep saying it over and over again because this is not even close to being a final release. So things in here could change. In fact, they probably will change later on. However, Microsoft has stated that they are going to constantly be updating this technical preview. However, I assume once the consumer preview comes out, they're going to create a separate ISO in which we're going to have to download. 
only time will tell what's going to happen there. We go to control panel here. Once again, looks very similar. Settings are pretty much the same. There's not much that's changed in here that I've seen. I, like I said, I've been using it for two hours. I did glance through everything um, and, and haven't seen much in the way of anything uh, drastically different in the control panel. Um, so yeah, that's basically Windows 10 in a nutshell and the, some of the main things that they've changed. Some people have also complained that this looks a lot like um, Linux now or, or um, yeah, basically. So yeah, uh, as it's updated, I will post another review out there when I feel or another video when I feel it's time. Uh, enough features have been introduced and enough things have been fixed that it renders me making another video. If you guys want me to make a techie versus user video on Windows 10 technical preview, let me know in the comments. And if I get enough people who request it, I will go ahead and uh, we'll see if we can make a techie versus user. And I might make one anyways, who knows? Depends how much time we have. Um, I know he's quite busy lately, starting, um, uh, well, I don't wanna get into that right now, but essentially he's been busy lately and uh, hasn't had much time to uh, help me out on my reviews, which is understandable. So that's it for this review, guys. Uh, let me know what you think, like I said, and I'll see you next time. Have a good day.